Peace and blessings, Israel. Shalom. <clears throat> thinking of a name. Thinking of a name. When we came here, our names were stripped. Our first names, our last names, our names as a people, as a nation. Stripped to the point that we forgot who we were. Many of us are just being awakened. Some of us are still asleep. One of the things I talk to people and some of them, particularly young people, don't recognize how powerful the effect was of not just having our culture taken, but our names taken and then changed, changed, okay? Most of us, if you're of the diaspora, other than those who've changed their last names, to Israel or change their names on their own. If you carry your family's name, your last name, normally what you're going to find, you get on your cell phone, Google your last name, which is your surname. And what you're going to find is either English, Irish, German, Swedish, um, Spanish, French. It's European. The names were stripped because there's power in your name. There's power in the name. We know that, okay, because God changed the name of Abraham to Abraham and Sarah to Sarai, Sarai to Sarah. Abraham being the father of many nations. And Sarah, being my princess, versus Sarai, princess. We know that he changed Jacob's name, supplanter, or he who takes the place of another to Israel. He who has struggled and wrestled with both God and man and prevailed, Israel. We know that Yeshua HaMashiach changed Simon's name, to Cephas, okay? One of the things we also know is that when the Most High comes, we get a new name. We get a new name, okay? But what about the nation that took us captive? When you read in Isaiah 65, and I'm going to start at the 14th verse, chapter 65, starting at the 14th verse. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart, and shall howl for vexation of spirit, and ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name, by another name. During the time of our captivity, particularly our enslavement, we didn't even have a last name. If we belonged to the Smith Plantation, we were Smith's John or Smith's Sarah or Smith's Rebecca or Smith's Paul or Johnson's Paul or you Johnson's Paul, you Johnson's Michael. When we were set physically free, we had to get surnames, surnames or last names. Many of us took on the names or were given the names of the slaveholders or whites that we knew about, famous whites like Lincoln or Lee, because we had no understanding of who they were and what they truly represented. Many of us took the name of Robert E. Lee, his last name being Lee, because in the southern states, Lee was a famous man that they held in high esteem. We never understand it was his intent that we stayed in enslavement. Some blacks gave themselves the name of free men or freed men. But the name, the name, that last name, you Google your last name, your family's name, and it traces back. It traces back to that time of captivity, okay? But God's going to give us a new name, a new name, okay? Um, 
I'm going to go to Isaiah chapter 62, verse 2. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all the kings thy glory. And thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. New name. A new name. We know in the book of Revelation, it also talks about God giving us a name. A new name, a new identity, a new understanding. The total change is coming, brothers and sisters. You can feel it on the edge of the wind. In the name of those who thought so highly of themselves, it will be left for a curse. Left for a curse because the truth of what they have done, first of all, in dishonoring God. Dishonoring human beings. Dishonoring the earth. God knows. A new name. A new name. Many times when people go into captivity, they're given a new name, a different name, to try to strip them of their past. Hananiah, Mishael, Azariah, and Daniel when they were taken into captivity in Babylon, you read in the book of Daniel, first chapter, they were the children of Judah, but they were given Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Belshazzar. They were trying to teach them their ways and their beliefs. But when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, also true names, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Went into their fiery furnace. It was the children of Judah who went in because they were honoring God and the power of God went in that furnace. There's a storm coming. And for many people who have not honored God, they've gone into that furnace, that furnace of His wrath. But it's our deliverance. That same blazing heat that those soldiers threw them into and those soldiers died from getting too close to the heat. They found deliverance, the truth of who they were and whom they belonged to and the power of God, who is God, Yah, came through blazing as they walked about and the heat did not harm them. When Daniel was with the king Belshazzar, the son of Nebuchadnezzar, after he took the gold and silver vessels that his father had taken out of the temple and he used them to drink with his wives, princes, concubines, and he was toasting the no gods of gold, silver, brass, and wood. And that hand wrote upon the wall. He called for Daniel. He didn't even call Daniel by his captive name of Belta Shazar, he called for Daniel because he knew God was with him to read the writing on the wall. But there's writing on the wall now, brothers and sisters. There's writing on the wall. All these things that are going on, all the weather changes. Nobody wants to believe that God will change all of this to set his people free. To bring us home, a new name, the birth pains of Judah and Israel are powerful, the birth pains rattling a nation, a new name, brothers and sisters, given by God, just like when Jesus named Cephas. And changed his name. He changed Simon's name to Cephas. God, angel of the Lord, changed Jacob's name to Israel. Abraham's name. Sarai's name. What's in a name? You Google your last name. It doesn't trace to whom we are. It tells what happened to us. It tells what happened in this country. But 
it's not over. I was just thinking of names, a new name, beautiful name, the power of that name, given by God. And the same people who threw our names away, who tried to bury us in history as though we died and never were. What happens to their name becomes a curse. A new name, beautiful name, Shalom.